हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज एक्सरसाइज नंबर 23 ऑफ द प्रोग्रेसिव मंथली मैक्सिमम मार्क 2022 ऑन द स्पीड ऑफ 100 वर्ड्स पर मिनट स्टार्ट लेट अस बी फ्रैंक एनफ टू रिकॉग्नाइज दैट दिस इंक्रीज इन द इंटेंसिटी एंड ड्यूरेशन ऑफ स्टॉपेजेस ऑफ वर्क हैज प्रिवेंटेड आवर इकोनॉमी फ्रॉम रियलाइजिंग इट्स फुल पोटेंशियल whichever party to the dispute may have emerged victorious from these confrontations so far as the nation is concerned the strikes have inflicted unmitigated loss we need industrial harmony not for the benefit of the classes who control the means of production not for the further advancement of the affluent section of the society but for the sake of the poorer masses who suffer an erosion of their low standards of living as a result of these interruption in production the unemployed whose only hope lies in a higher rate of capital formation and investment whether in the public or in the private sector suffer most in the process we are all here today to find a solution to this grave industrial problem and to consider how to mitigate if not to end the present stage of disorder in labor management relations the ministry of labor has made several suggestions to promote industrial harmony such as ending the multiplicity of trade unions the recognition of a single bargaining agent and so on these lead to other related issues such as how to promote internal leadership within the trade union movement and what agencies should be set up to consider and resolve disputes as they arise my friend tells me that these points were set out more as a basis for discussion and to help in your deliberations i do not wish to go into these issues in detail nor to prejudge or prejudice the discussions but may i suggest that you evaluate these points and any others with one criterion whether they will increase or reduce industrial disputes trade union leaders have always been in the vanguard of progressive forces in our public life whatever their other differences they have stood for the uplift of the poorer sections of the society and for the subordination of personal interests to larger ones they would be untrue to this tradition if they do not focus their attention on the problem of augmenting production at this critical juncture when apart from our other problems 3 million victims of the rain of terror unleashed across our borders have sought refuge in our land the shortfalls in production have also affected government revenues and reduced potential levels of investment the working class and their leaders have been among the foremost in urging the expansion of the public sector and the nationalization of key sectors of the economy the government and the public are therefore entitled to expect of workers in public enterprises greater devotion and dedication to work than has been so far evident i must admit that there is scope for the improvement of communication between management and workers in public enterprises 
I do not think that it is enough to give workers representation merely on the boards of management. We need to involve them more intimately in the problems of the enterprises at various levels. We constantly hear of the need to check the concentration of economic power in the hands of a few in the private sector. I believe that by far the most effective means of checking these trends is to enlarge the role of the public sector and to upgrade its efficiency. The formidable managerial problems of the public sector need immediate attention. But the acceptance of a greater measure of discipline and dedication on the part of labor in public enterprises is also an essential element in our strategy to make the public sector the pace setter in our economy. It is hardly necessary to remind you that labor is a major participant in the productive process and the quality and intensity of its efforts are critical in increasing the rate of growth production and therefore of investment in the economy. The demands for higher wages and other benefits by organized labor are understandable. But these have to be pursued within a policy framework which pays due regard to the general state of the economy and the interests of the unemployed. In a country like ours, where there are millions of unemployed and underemployed, what is needed is a fair distribution of opportunities for gainful employment. In this sense, the employed, particularly in the organized sector, who enjoy a measure of special security, should recognize that in our country, to be employed in is in itself a privilege. Hence, they should not merely seek unilateral gains for themselves, but should also have some compassion for those who are willing to work yet are unable to do so because of the comparatively low rate of capital formation. I am sure that trade unions will interpret their responsibilities in this wider sense and work to secure for the employed as well as the prospective labor an increasing equitable share of progressively rising national product. Our country has gone through a very difficult period, but there is every indication that we are poised for rapid advance.